Hey there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Today I'm going to be replacing the blower motor resistor on a 99 Subaru Forester. This video should apply directly to 98 to 2001 Subaru Foresters and it will probably be quite similar on other Subaru models and even newer models of Subarus. So first we'll go over what uh, a failed one of these looks like, what the symptoms are, what causes it to fail, that sort of thing and then we'll get straight to changing it. So what a blower motor resistor does is lower your fan speeds. The highest speed on your fan actually doesn't run through the resistor. So that's the symptom my car is experiencing is it's only running on the high setting. Before it gets to that point, you may notice your motor cutting in and out on the lower settings or making squealing noises, that sort of thing. Now you could have a problem with your fan motor, so you want to rule that out. Sometimes they just get leaves and debris built up in there, and if you just take the motor out and clean the housing out, that'll fix it. But I already did all that and confirmed that it is the blower motor resistor, so I'll do just demonstrate to you what that symptom looks like on my car. Okay, you can see with the key on, nothing on those first three settings, but it works fine on the... Uh, the fourth setting on the high setting so we know it's going to be a blower motor resistor causing that it basically has these little coils in there these little heat coils that uh, bleed off the extra power so that the motor can run slower that's why this is up in the duct because this has to be cooled it's cooled by the air moving through the duct and what happens is those little springs in there those little coils they get corroded up over time from all the heat cycles and that causes extra resistance in there and eventually they just burn out and fail. So this was a aftermarket part and it was about $50. I'm sure you can get one from the dealer for around a hundred thereabouts. And what you're gonna need to uh, change this effectively is a right angle drive screwdriver. I've got this nice little setup there and uh, it's actually in behind the glove box but Taking the glove box out wouldn't help you any because you can see the dash still comes down there anyways. So what you have to do is get in that tight space between the heater box and the glove box and that uh, resistor is right about here. Held in with two Phillips number two screws and we got to unclip and disconnect the uh, power plug. Okay, I would think that the hardest part about this is actually going to be unplugging it because unfortunately they put the little clasp for the plug on top so if you've got small hands good for you I don't so uh, I'm gonna use this hooked pick and hopefully that'll do it as you can see I've got the electrical plug removed now so I'm gonna get up in there with my right angle screwdriver get the top screw first this is gonna be tight okay I'm back and I just got one of those uh, little guys there so we'll give that a try well, let's see if I can get this bogging one out at least. Okay, the bogging one will come out. They're short screws at least. Okay, we'll leave that one's out as well. Okay guys, I have both screws free. So we're going to lift the unit out. Should slide right out. Oh, it's tight. I think I'm just going to pull out on the dash. Yeah, a little bit and that works. Okay, well that wasn't particularly fun. Now we've got it out and you just want to inspect that plug and make sure that it isn't burnt. Inspect the other half of the plug because sometimes that can happen when an electrical part fails. It will melt all these pins and uh, you might have to clean up the other half of the plug. Everything matches. We've got a, a dead match here so that is nice. Okay, I'm going to let you watch me wrestle the new one up there and this flat corner seems to have a, a key thing to do with how you position it to get it in there and you also have to as you can see when I took that one out just grab the bog and the dash and pull out on it a little bit there's quite a bit of flex there and try to just slide it straight up there okay I'm past the dash Again, pull out on the dash a little. Come on. Looks like it's lined up. Ooh, tight fit, but it's going in. Nice. So I just have to get the screws in now. 
Okay, I just went and magnetized this bit a little bit. Now I'm just gonna try and get it positioned up in there without it falling off. We'll see. If you want it to make this job super simple, drill a couple holes just here, somewhere around here, you'll have to look. I'm not gonna do that, so, but uh, it'll be easy to do and you can even get this door down, those catches come out of there. I think you just fold the sides in and then you can drop the, the door right down and, and make it pretty easy on yourself. Okay, I managed to get the uh, upper screw in without using too many bad words and uh, just get this lower one in now should be a cinch. And you won't have to go crazy tight on that, just snug it up. And now, just gotta get it plugged in. Okay guys, well I can't get mine to click. And I, it's not locked because I can pull it back out, but it takes a lot of effort to pull back out. So I think it's gonna stay in there just fine. I'm just making sure it's fully seated in there. Okay, just a couple other quick tips before we test our new blower motor resistor here. One, you can add some uh, dielectric grease to that connector on there to prevent any future corrosion. And uh, also, if you do take my advice or my tip that you could drill an access hole there, just be careful because there are wires directly behind there. So make sure you uh, feel around with your hand behind there. And of course, don't drill through into the heater box. So now we're going to give it a quick test run here. And uh, currently in the off position, so we'll turn the key on. Okay, here goes. Let's see if we're successful. Yeah, one works, two works, three works, and of course four works. Figured I'd take a second and just peel that guard off of there so you could see the internal workings. So those are the little resistor springs. And actually what failed on this is just that solder joint there. That's the main power feed coming into all the resistors. So that's why None of them are working. Okay guys, that's all there is to changing your blower motor resistor in your 98 to 2001 Subaru Forester. So thanks a lot for watching Matt's Garage. I do hope you found the video helpful and informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.